it's Gabrielle, and this video is a sample from StudyClicks Boost, our new rapid revision tool. Go to studyclicks.ie forward slash boost to find out more. Hey there, it's Stephen here with StudyClicks, and in this video, we're going to look at graphing quadratic functions and some of the questions that tag along with these graphs. So we're going to say quadratic functions will look like this f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So that's the form of a quadratic function, and it's made quadratic because it has an x squared term. Now these graphs are going to have two distinct shapes. If the number in front of the x squared is positive, so if this number a attached to the x squared is a positive number, the graph is going to be a u-shaped curve. But if the number in front of the x squared is a negative number, say we've a minus in front of the x squared, we're going to get this n-shaped curve. So it's a good idea to have those in our head for when we go ahead to graph these functions. We're going to have either a u-shape or an n-shape. Now let's see how these questions are asked. I'm told to graph the function f of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 4 in the domain x is less than or equal to 2 and bigger than or equal to minus 4. So just a reminder that a domain is the set of x values or the set of inputs for your graph. So this is going to be the x-axis. The x-axis is going to go down from minus 4 all the way up to the number 2 and every number in between. So the domain there are our inputs and our function here f of x is a quadratic because it has an x squared term and if we have a look the number in front of x squared there would be 1 which is positive so we can expect to get this u-shaped graph out. So how are we going to draw this graph? Well we're going to look at these steps. We're going to get our calculator at the ready and then follow them one by one. So step number one in graphing function says to press mode, then three. So I press mode in the top right, then three for table. F of x pops up and step two says to input the function. So this is where I'm going to put in my x squared plus 2x minus four. So to get my x, I press alpha, then the right hand bracket to get x, then squared plus two. And then I want another x, so alpha in bracket to get x minus 4. Now it's very important that you've this part input correctly otherwise your whole answer will be wrong. So double check we have our x squared plus 2x minus 4 there. We'll press equals as our enter button and then this start pops up. So the third bullet point says to look at your domain for the start and the end. So the start number will be the smallest number in your domain which is minus 4 and the end number is going to be 2. So we're going to start at minus 4 and go the whole way up to 2 across our x-axis basically. So I'll get my calculator back. I don't want 1 as my start. I'm going to type minus 4 for my start and press equals for enter. Then I don't want to end at 5 as it says on the screen. I want to end at 2. So I'm going to type 2 to overwrite that and then equals for enter. Then my fourth step says step is the number you want to jump in along the x-axis. So my numbers stretch from minus 4 up to 2 here and typically you're going to step in 1s along your x-axis. So I'm going to step in 1 which means I'm going to go from minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1 then 2. My x-axis will hop in 1s and then we press enters or equals to get our table out. So we get our pairs of points here, our x values and our f of x values. So just a reminder there that f of x is the same is y. So this table gives us the x and y values. Minus 4, 4. Second set is minus 3, minus 1. Third set is minus 2, minus 4. We'll use the down arrow to keep going down to see all the rest of our points and it stops there at x equals 2 because that's the end point in our domain. So what I'm going to do is copy this table down into my rough work so that I can then go ahead to draw the graph. So now with my table, I'm able to generate the points. A reminder that f of x and y is the same thing. So I'm just going to say that these are the x and y values. And these give you the points for your graph. So the first x and y value is minus 4, 4 gives you the point minus 4, 4. The next set in the table gives you the point minus 3, minus 1. The third set gives you the point minus 2, minus 4, and so on and so forth. So you don't need to write the points out, but just when we see this table, we're visualizing these pairs of points. Now, we want to go ahead and draw this on an x and a y axis. So what I'm going to do first is just plan what this is going to look like. I know my x axis needs to go from the smallest number, which is minus 4, up to the highest number, which is 2 along the x and then my y axis is going to come along and if I have a look at the highest point on my y axis is 4 and the lowest point 
is minus five. So I'm going to need to use my ruler now in a moment to create my axis that has these values included on it. You can go and extend it out further past these values if you want, but we need the minimum these values here to be able to plot the points from that table. So here you can see we've used our rulers to draw this perfect axis. My x axis goes from minus four up to two, and my y axis has enough values to get the values I need plotted on it. So now we can go ahead and start plotting our points. My first point is minus four and four, so I'm over to minus four on the x and up to four on the y axis to get our first point. Then we have minus three and minus one, so x is minus three, y is minus one. Over to minus two down to minus four next. And then we're on to minus one and minus five, so that's our lowest point on our curve. Then we have x is zero, y is minus four, so I'm plotting this along the y axis. Then we have the point one and minus one, and finally we have the point two, four. So here you can see these are forming that U shape that we talked about earlier. Now we're going to go ahead and join the dots using a free hand. We're going to draw a curved U shape that we talked about earlier through each of these points. And we're going to give the function a name, f of x. So that's the graph drawn, folks. It's a little bit busy, but the calculator does the hard work. You need to know the steps to be able to input the function in, what your start and your end are from your domain and what your step is. Then we take that table of points, we throw it down into our rough work, we create our axes and draw our graph. Now let's take a look at some of the questions that can tag along with drawing a graph. So we're asked here to use your graph to estimate part A, f of minus 2.5. Now what we have here is the graph of f of x and what they want us to do is find the value of f of minus 2.5. So basically what they've done here is they've inputted minus 2.5 into the function for x. They're saying let x be minus 2.5. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to minus 2.5 on the x-axis. I'm going to take my ruler over to it. From that point of x is minus 2.5, I'm going to do a dotted line down until I meet the function. And whenever I do that, I'm going to flip the ruler over to go ahead and get the corresponding output or y value for that. So I get a value here for f of minus 2.5 being roughly minus 2.8 on my graph. We're just reading off the corresponding y value for when x is minus 2.5. If we have a look at part B, it's asking for f of 2. So what they want us to do here is go to x is 2. They want to input 2 into the function. So I go to my x-axis, I mark off the point 2, and I'm going to go up this time to meet the function. So you're always going up or down to meet your function. And then from that point when I meet the function, I'm going to bring it over to my y-axis to get the corresponding output. And you can see for me the output this time is 4. So I'm going to say here to answer part B, f of 2 simply equals 4. So this question wanted us to use our graph to do this and the way we show our workings to do that is by these dotted lines on the graph. If you don't have those dotted lines I'm afraid the examiner cannot give you full marks. Now let's look at one last style of question that can be associated with our graphs. Here we're asked to use your graph to estimate the x values for which part d f of x equals 4. Now, I want to remind you that y and f of x are the same thing. So whenever I have this f of x equals 4, I'm simply going to change that question to when y equals 4. So what they want us to do, let's read the question again, to use your graph to estimate the values of x. So we're looking for the x values when y equals 4 in the function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to go up to the y-axis to when y equals 4. And I'm going to draw a dotted line across in both directions to meet the function, because we meet it twice with our U shape. At each point where our dotted line meets the function, I'm going to drop down to the X axis. So the first X value we're going to get there is 2. And if we go over to the other side, we're going to drop that point down where we meet the function, and we're going to get a value of minus 4. So to answer part D, the X values for which Y equals 4 happen when X equals 2, and when x equals minus 4. So we're basically working in the opposite direction to the previous parts. We have the output this time. We have the y value of 4. And we just want to go over to the function and down to get the x values for that output of 4. And we're going to repeat that for part d. We want to estimate the values of x for which f of x equals minus 3. Well, I'm going to replace that with just y equals minus 3. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to go to y equals minus 3. 
I'm going to go over to meet the function to the right and I'm also going to go over to the left. Then I'm going to flip the ruler around and bring these points up to the x-axis from where they meet the function. So our first value there happens when x is roughly equal to a half and our second point we'll bring it on up to meet the x-axis is roughly at minus 2.5. So I'm going to say here for part e when the function f of x equals minus 3 or when y equals minus 3 happens when x is roughly equal to a half and x is roughly equal to minus 2.5. Now your answers might be off a little bit by a slight decimal and that's okay. You state the answers that are appropriate to your graph. So for example, I have minus 2.5 here as one of my answers. It might look more like minus 2.6 or minus 2.4 on your graph. Once as it's in and around the same number and the examiner can see your workings, he'll give you the full marks in the exam. So there you have it folks, that's our quadratic functions in action. To draw our graphs, we need to know them steps for the calculator. Now it's your turn to try this out. Pause the video here, work through these questions and check in with the solutions when they appear on screen. In question one, we're drawing our graph, then we're inputting those x values into the function, drawing a dotted line down to meet the graph and over to get the corresponding y values. Notice how I have a star on minus 4.75. For me, it looks like that, but on your graph, it might be 4.7 or minus 4.8. So just go with the value appropriate to yours. And in question two, we're drawing the graph and answering some questions. This time we have the y values. We draw the dotted line over to meet the graph in both directions, drop the lines down and estimate the values of x. Yours might be off by a slight decimal, but for my graph, this is what it looks like. But again, the examiner will always give you the marks based on yours. Thanks for watching.